Yeah, well, hello, everyone. Um, thank you all for making time this evening. I think 6 p.m. means evening now. Um, my name is Adrian Wren. I'm president of the Oak Park Neighborhood Association. We're a, a 501c3 nonprofit here in Oak Park uh, in our beautiful neighborhood. So we're really excited for the, tonight's meeting. We actually have these meetings every month, the first Thursday of every month. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking air quality in addition to some other things. So actually, we're going to be talking air quality because we have an awesome UC Davis class here who has actually analyzed some air quality data from here in Oak Park. Um, and then we're actually, we have our friends from Rancho San Miguel. You guys want to raise your hand? Um, they provided some pastry and other good stuff for tonight. So thank you, our friends from Rancho San Miguel. Then we also have a bunch of other like surprise. We have a surprise announcement and a secret announcement. So stay for those. You guys stay for stuff. Um, but we all, the first thing we always like to do is go around the room and do introductions. So, so, first, so you can share your name. Uh, if you have an affiliation, just, just name. And then if you live in Oak Park, we'd love to know where in Oak Park you live. So, Adrian Wren, I'm at the corner of 4th Avenue and 39th. Uh, Michael Judgment, I'm from Oak on 9th Avenue, uh, now in South Oak Park. Uh, I'm Johnny Russell, I'm on 39th and it's in 12th and 14th. I'm on 39th as well. Robert Snyder, I'm at 36th in line. I'm Gary Slayer Snyder, I'm with the Sacramento Metropolitan Airport. I'm Mr. Ware at 36th and 23rd Avenue. And thank you. Glad you got here. You're finished? Yeah, and thank you. I'm Ryan Anderson, I'm at 32nd Street at 1st Avenue. I'm
police commissioner. Oh, police. <laughs> not, a, not a police officer, a police commissioner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Cadesso, I'm with Food for Less and Ranch and Seven Go, and I'm excited to sign you. Chris Baker, I'm excited in South Sacramento, community representative for the good folks here at Food for Less, and uh, Sheriff Tobas, I'm commissioner. Hello, I'm Wilson, your um, director of your friendly Rancho San Miguel neighborhood market. Uh, I reside in Stockton and I work out here at 401 and Broadway. Hi, I'm Bill Leo. I go to UC Davis. I'm here part of the group presenting. Hi, I'm Jesus Barajas and I'm the professor of this class. Thanks for you. Hi, Natalie. I'm one of, I'm a student and one of the presenters. I'm Leo. I'm also a student and I'm on the presenter.
first step in what we hope is, is a, a longer term partnership. Um, and nine weeks is not a lot of time to, to uh, really dig in, but uh, I'm excited about um, the work that they've done and uh, for them to share. Uh, are, we, are we ready to? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's bring up the students. All right, come on out. Absolutely. <laughs>
Uh, I'm sure many of you here remember that this particular spike on August, um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it was in late August 2021, uh, and it was a large residential fire that burned, I think, over two dozen homes in the neighborhood. So that obviously created a, a large event of uh, hazardous air quality in the neighborhood. Um, but apart from those um, spikes in August due to fires, most of the bad air quality is concentrated around those winter months. Um, if you go to the last calendar plot, um, if you want to see some extra text on it, um, you can see that we have singled out a few of the particularly bad months, which are January 2022 and December 2022. Um, and you can see that even within uh, those times, the, the, the air quality is much worse in specifically in Oak Park than it is in Greater Sacramento. So um, you can see some uh, two of the monitors have readings at 10 a.m. on January 16, 2022, which is a particularly bad day of 183 and 152, which is all the way into that unhealthy for everyone category. Um, while the reading in, in I don't know if it's exactly where in Sacramento, but a reading generally in Central Sacramento. Still above, uh, it's still on the air quality, but it's not nearly as bad as the um, And then on December 24th, you can see an even uh, bigger disparity, uh, excuse me, disparity there between some of the uh, monitors in the park and. Okay, and if you flip the page on this next slide, there's a map of the percentage of the total coverage. that part of the 
the percentage of land area that's within the 500 feet of the commuter roadways. Um, then, kind of again, what Katie was um, saying with the map on the right, uh, on the left, sorry, is that um, we wanted to look at the number of hours where the H2I was unhealthy for sensitive groups. And um, we're actually surprised to find um, that the sensor straps with the worst air quality actually have the least amount of land area within the um, 500 feet um, buffer of roadways. And we turn to the next page. Um, this, uh, we have not said that it could be contributed or it could be due to um, a variety of outstanding factors, but um, it could be because there are nearby um, uh, manufacturing facilities kind of um, down Oak Park and close. Um, the balloons that they create could be carried to Oak Park by different wind directions or different wind speeds, um, but that would take further analysis to prove for sure. Another hypothesis that we have um, with, to explain why the southern part of Oak Park experiences more air quality or bad air quality is um, rush hour and like traveling on your freeways. Um, so we looked at two monitors, monitor six and monitor two. And if you guys look at the map on the right hand side, you can see the locations of monitor six and monitor two. Monitor six is the southern coast monitor and it's near, it's right northward of the 99. And monitor two is southward of the Um And looking at the graphs on the left hand side, you can see, so it's a, uh, on the x axis, it's hours throughout the day, and on the y axis, it's HY. So the red line is basically the average. Um, the darker red portion is kind of like 50% of the data, and then the lighter pink portion is the extremes. And as you can see, on this, especially on this top uh, graph, which is monitor 6, uh, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., there's definitely more of a spike in that area, and so that's why we there's more people driving, more people are going to work, more people out on the freeways. Um, so we attribute that spike could be because of the extra vehicles on the road. And then there is a similar spike in monitor two, um, but it's not as uh, large as the top spike. And we attribute that because the monitor is farther with the freeway and also with wind speeds and wind uh, power, um, that pollution is not getting pushed all the way to uh, monitor two. The wind in Sacramento in uh, the Oak Park area mostly blows northward, and so the wind from I-99 is blowing toward monitor 6, whereas the vehicle emissions near monitor 2 is blowing in the northward and doesn't reach monitor 2, it goes past it. Um, so this is why we think that monitor 6 is the kind of region around it is seeing a higher uh, back or worse air quality during the day than monitor 2.
that we would like you to take so that um, it's a, a strong plan and a plan that's, that can be enforced later on. Okay. To, the to the next slide. Um, but uh, things to keep in mind is that they can also not be that, right? Like, uh, they can often include voluntary incentive programs that uh, do not actually include, like, an actionable mechanism to improve air quality and reduce air pollution. Um, and again, looking at a case study from South Central Fresno, where uh, what the proposed action was to provide air quality related programs to schools, provide information on programs like safe groups, and uh, sharing information on schools on hazard programs, um, which is a bit vague and has been research that would tend to be that. Um, and it's just to keep in mind that uh, in keeping uh, search that are actionable and enforceable are, are the goal um, to reduce their growth or pollution in the community. So, if you want to move to the next slide. Uh, the final slide
but we wanted to focus on things that are specific to the Right. But so, uh, so we're going to move on to other questions. We're running out of time. So we got a question over here. Cool. Hi, thank you for your report. It was great. Um, good job. I'm wondering why you chose Oak Park as a place to study. Well, I think I can answer that. <laughs> So, so we've been doing air quality monitoring in Oak Park for over two years. This class, we've recently, recently partnered with to analyze the data we've been collecting over the last two years. The reason that Oak Park was chosen, actually we have our friends at the Air Sacramento Air District with us. We did an analysis of the whole Sacramento, all of Sacramento County, and identified 10, basically of the most polluted areas in the county. South Sacramento Florin was really, I would, would you call it kind of the, the, the top I know maybe not top is it's not like they brag about it, but they're like the top choice for uh, air quality monitoring and emission reduction. So they've been advanced to this formal AB 617 process. Chris is actually on that steering committee, aren't you? So, so Chris has been involved for forever. Janice has been involved forever. Um, they've been doing that in South Sac Florin. What we're doing is we, we got a grant to do that in additional neighborhoods around Sacramento County, Oak Park, North Sac, and if we get some more funding then. So these are these are generally more polluted areas, and as as we saw in the data, more polluted areas than the, the, the rest of the sector. And I think Jay, I don't know if Janice, you want to make any comments. Chris has also been doing this for hours. Have you guys identified uh, the parts per million? I'm I'm intrigued by this from an industry standpoint, the grocery industry, Coca-Cola, Campbell's, and Bebo Bakeries. Have you guys uh, bifurcated or identified parts per million if if Bebo closed down? What that would be is a reduction in the air quality or Coca Cola or Campbell's? Bebo? Yeah. I was just curious. It might be hard to do. But yeah, that's a question. So we got, all right, raise your hand if you have a question. Raise your hand if you have a question. We got two questions over here. So, Robert, I was just curious, it was the role. Yeah, some of those areas are yeah that was, that was actually the timeline of the project kind of lingered us, but that is something that we'll, we're going to be including in the final report. So um, I, I don't want to go too into the depth, but we have been looking at the kind of similar to our other findings, the uh, northern, uh, probably the northern half of the neighborhood has about a 30 percent uh, tree like tree density, and the southern area has an average of about 20 percent. So there is from our preliminary there is a significant difference in the tree density of the two areas. Yeah, that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing to look at for sure. Yeah. In addition to that uh, point, I was going to point out, uh, I know also considered the fires, for example, what happened to the uh, forest fires, or more so for chimneys or only in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I especially, I didn't mention this, but especially in the winter, uh, wood burning is, is a big, you know, obviously I, I talked about how the temperature is where it keeps that pollution kind of in the area, but a lot of there's all, you know, as well as pollution staying at ground level, there's also increased pollution in wintertime just because of chimneys and wood burning, um, as well as like travel. So, you know, one of the days that I have is Christmas Eve, there's obviously a lot of, or, you know, the day of Christmas Eve, so there's obviously more people on the freeways on those days, leading to more pollution in the winter stays in the area. Robin. Now, I wanted to ask two questions real quick. Uh, how many of you, uh, so from right to left, how many of you live in Oak Park? Yeah, yeah they're easy. 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 They're you get a uh, BA, uh, MS, uh, master's, PhD, right? Uh, we're all undergraduate students, and we're all studying environmental science or environmental policy. Mary, again, we have to say thank you. You've done a wonderful job. And thank you.
strategies did you um, notice that seemed to be most effective, or at least um, able to be implemented on the ground in those communities? Yeah, so part of the challenge of how 8617, which is the village that a lot of this is under, is set up is that there aren't uh, clear mechanisms within the bill itself to ensure that like policies actually do improve air quality for that um, for that measurement. So uh, communities can include those like goals or monitoring into their community emission uh, reduction plans, and so that is something I would encourage um, to create that. But there's no built-in mechanism in the law that says you know these there must you know after this amount of time there's got to be another set of monitoring that, that sees that these policies have worked or how well they work, and then if they're not working, we will reassess. There's nothing like that in the, in the bill. So those types of things need to be kind of proactively um, looked at. In terms of the, so it's hard to know. It's also, it's, these programs, uh, this law was just passed in 2017. It's only been, these programs, there's, there's initial monitoring, and then they uh, do the, the, the plan. So these plans have been in place for super long. There's very little data on how well they work. Um, so that it's kind of hard to tell so far. Um, yeah, yes. Um, so I guess my question is mainly, what would you recommend people do on an like, individual basis? Like, the general recommendation for air pollution is to stay inside, right? But like, you're staying inside weeks on an episode of other health complications. So like, what are things that you would recommend
questions. If you guys can, can hang out for a while and see how the rest of the community is. So, um, so I actually have my colleague, uh, Christina, here, who's been working on the Stack project. She's been working on the Stack project with me for a while now, who has some, basically, an overview of what possible next steps would be if you're interested in plugging in more to this. So first I wanted to say thank you to the UCA, the students, for that analysis. Even though we've seen the data ourselves, it's just so much better to have the analysis and for you to break it down for us. That's definitely going to help me in my work, and I'm sure I'm reading great textbook as well, so thank you. Um, as Adrian was saying, uh, we are in a continuation of SNAP. You've heard this work being thrown around a lot, and um, actually, in the fall, we uh, recruited two neighborhoods, so North South and North Park, we recruited members to form what we also call a steering committee, um, and they have been really helpful in selecting one, I think, I don't know where Stacey is. Stacey. Stacey, are you back there? Hi, Stacey. Um, and so they've been really integral in being that community champion for us to do something called participatory budgeting. Participatory budgeting um, in the SNAC project has been able to help us allocate how $100,000 in hard costs are gonna help us advance emission reduction strategies in both neighborhoods. And so there's a lot, it gets really technical, um, but, and there's prioritization involved, but we really would love community to be a part of that process. We have been in a really robust planning phase. We're finally in, um, soon to be in the summertime to the fall time, in a place where we are gonna be public facing, getting community feedback, um, and really building this out of what emission reduction strategies we wanna see funded in the near future. And so we do have um, some updates that we can send out. If you saw the sign sheet in the front, there is a category that says snack updates, yes or no, just check yes, and put down your email if you want to be looped into that and part of the conversation. Awesome. Thanks, Christina. Let's give the new series a So, you can hang out or you can see that, either or. Love if you can hang out. Um, so we're actually going to transition now to our friends at Rancho San Miguel. Um, they're our local grocery store. Um, how long has Rancho San Miguel been in Oak Park at this point? Uh, two years now. Two years now, my goodness. Um, well, so we understand there's some changes coming to the store, and so we'd love to hear more about that. And thank you guys, by the way, for bringing the, uh, the pastries and the coffee. Uh, over there would be good, actually, we've got our little camera. Oh, well, you <laughs> All right, y'all, let's see if, let's see there, no chit-chatting here in this room, all right? I'm not going to I'll talk about it with you all here. My name is Wilson. I'm the director of Metro San Diego. Uh, so we're going to talk about the changes, not the changes that are coming to the store, but the changes that have already taken place in the store. Now, I'm going to tell you why these changes took place. Uh, so I'm just going to go over here. Our, our company, the company that I work for, uh, I've been with them for over 30 years. They, uh, uh, each community that the store, the Food for Lessons, goes to, they're very interested in that community and is serving that community. And so Rancho San Miguel was probably introduced probably like 10 years ago, I think like 10 years ago, and stopped it. Uh, and so it was something we wanted to bring to Sacramento. Now, so I'm just going to set the record straight. Rancho San Miguel is a grocery store, a regular grocery store, with a Hispanic scratch kitchen and a Hispanic scratch bakery. So any of your grocery needs, don't feel like that store is not for me. That store is for you. The items we have in that store are items you would buy anywhere else. Okay, quality products. Uh, so the reason why the changes were happened was, you know, like each week, our my bosses and each one of the store directors, I'm talking about from down south to up here in the north, the food for lessons and the ranchos, we all come together and we uh, we have meetings uh, about the stores. And you know, the products that we each carry, they're all the same products, but you know, and so we talk about the 
scores, con the concerns of the store, of our community, each community scores. And so in this community here, we felt like, this has been maybe like two months ago, we felt like that we needed to, uh, and this is coming from customers who feel like coming to us. You know, you don't have this, you don't have that. And, and so we, the company knew as a whole that we needed to do something in the Oak Park community to better address the needs of the community. Okay, so uh, what happened was there was a restructure of the prices as a whole. Uh, the company felt like from going to compare prices to other places uh, that maybe we need to you know have a different structure here so we can so the community we're here for we're here for the community. And so that is what happened. And that's not a, that's not like an easy feat. It's actually a project. And so they brought in a team of people into the store and we have about a itemization of about 3,000 SKUs and I would say 99, maybe 95% of those SKUs, those individual items, were slashed. Okay? And uh, so to make it more, make it competitive, make it more affordable for the people in the community. Okay, and so and another thing we did besides that was, uh, so we have this meat counter. And I, I want to ask, I want to ask that think you all been in this store. You know, I, I, don't want, I don't want you to raise your hand, <coughs> but if you've been in the store, you've, you've seen this. We have this 50 over 50 foot large meat counter, and it's uh, they they serve you. You want one piece of chicken, two, whatever. And you can get that. Well, some of the customers are not really accustomed to that. They want to just see the price as it is, the package. So, besides that 50 foot, over 50 foot uh, uh, meat counter, uh, service meat counter, we also introduced a 32, I think it's like 24 feet of package family size, like chicken and different things like that, for the people who were more accustomed to buying things like that. Uh, and so these are some of the changes that we made. Now, did it work? Yeah, it did work. Uh, we are now experiencing like over 22% sales growth. Okay, uh, and we're still going, and we're still, now I'm going to tell you, we're not going to change who we are. It, it's, a, it's a grocery store with a Hispanic, scratch kitchen and a scratch bakery. But we, because of the way this company is always run, we adapt to what the community wants. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, that's it in a nutshell. Awesome. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions for Wilson? Any questions about the price, the price cuts they've been doing? And how long have you been doing the, doing the price cuts? Well, it was, uh, we, we did the price cuts, uh, it was, uh, which month? A month ago. A month ago. Okay, so if you haven't been to Rancho in a month, you should go again. I'm going to remember your faces. <laughs> I, I go there pretty frequently. Uh, and the burritos are great. Yes, yeah, the, the scratch bag is good. And the are horrible. Well, one more thing, I do have to say this. So, because my company, one of my bosses are here right now, he knows, because he's part of that whole making sure these things happen. I'm only so awesome it's convenient for you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did a purchase of some different items. Aggressively, they, they aggressively buy. I mean, I've just never been a part of a company that was so aggressive and trying to really take care of the community. So, uh, I'm just going to tell you about a couple of meal deals here, okay? So we have these rotisserie chickens. I mean, mouth-watering succulent. Which is chickens for $4.99. Okay? Now, you can also get that same chicken in a meal deal, and then I want somebody to guess and tell me what that price is going to be. You got a meal deal of that whole chicken, you got a 32 ounce container of rice, a 32 ounce container of beans, you got a 32 ounce, you have an 8 ounce uh, container of fresh made salsa, and 12 tortillas. Corn tortillas and uh, 1.5 liter of burritos, any drink of your choice. What would that price be? Thank you. <laughs>
And they okay, what is the it. mechanism of them owning it? Yeah, so after a year they vest. As when, when we bought the company, it was owned by a, a private family. We as the employees uh, bought the company and created an ESOP. What that meant is we didn't have to pay. It gave the owners a tax break to sell it to us employees. And so after a year, uh, when we bought the company, our stock value was 26 cents a share. It's now $8.20. So our employees actually, in addition to a 401k, have significant uh, money built up. As the company grows and is successful, their stock value grows. Stock value is distributed each year based on uh, time in the company. Uh, so th there's an exact formula. I don't have it memorized, but I, I would provide it. So we are 100% employee owned. Yes, sir. Can you give you 30 seconds of feedback? My, uh, my wife, who is in here, so I'll just say it in public, takes a picky to a high art form. She went into your store for the first time two weeks ago. She was at, she was at the meat counter, and I watched her put on four young men with about 20 questions. He did such a good job. I don't know who's training your folks and how to talk to people and you know, they're probably good. He did an excellent job. And like I said, it was our first time in there, and you got a customer because of that one guy. So let me, can I speak on that real quick? So we do have a, so we have so many programs in place in this company, and we have a customer service program where we are consistently training employees how to treat customers. Yeah. And we may have one or two follow-up tracks, but for the most part, we uh, we feel like they're all on board, uh, and we have uh, secret shoppers that come to come through and do a shop, and you guys are probably familiar with that. Uh, to try to get a glimpse of how our and they do a feedback a report, and it gives us a glimpse of how our customers, how our employees are treating our customers. And so, I'm glad to see this working. Wilson, I'm sorry, you had a question, sir? Yeah, so just personally, I think that, I think the community of our family as well, uh, I'd like to see more of the healthier uh, type of a grocery store. I know we have a co op, you know, about a mile away. Uh, you know, it's all romantic and stuff like that, but very, very pricey. Uh, and I think something in between to the trade of the co op, I think, would be a good fit for us. I'm not saying just to have all organic, but more having that agenda to provide healthier food choices for the community. Yeah, you're, you're, you're spot on. So, UNFI is a supplier, uh, a lot of uh, healthier, you know, organic's always an interesting word. If I, if I put non-organic grapes up for 99 cents a pound, and I put organic grapes for $1.49 a pound, guess, guess which ones we sell? So it's, it's, it's always, it's, it's a challenge for us, but I think you're spot on with the assortment. Again, I, I, and I don't mean to offend, I, I use the word international, but maybe that's not the right word. This neighborhood is so unique. We're going back and looking at uh, IRI data and Nielsen data on healthier items and integrating them into the store. So the mix of the store, it says Rancho San Miguel, but it's, you know, I don't know if that was the right name or not. The truth is I don't think all the neighborhood people that haven't tried it, most people I talk to that try it love it. Uh, we just need to get more people to try it. And, and you are right, I, I challenged our category management team to look at a, a whole assortment of healthier. I mean, there, there is a granola contingent in this community as well as <laughs> other things. So, I, I mean, we're, we're trying to identify all of that and, and, and serve you guys the way you want to be served. Yes, sir. To me, I'll start by saying thank you for filling the space because at the end of the day, Proximity matters to a lot of people. Um, and because Sacramento Public Transit is not the greatest thing to get out into other spaces and have different options. Uh, I myself drive around with my kids and take them to all places. And so I have the option to get a few things from this store, a few things from another store. And I do like to shop in my Pino Hoy and Marcus Sport and Greens. Tomatoes that I get are all coming either from Mexico or coming from Chile or being imported from other places. 
when a year after birth to get the tomatoes that are going local. So it's less, less so annoying of the price, more of the quality of the market. And I know that that poses a lot of challenges working with the smaller farmers or what the contracts are, or how much to make you guys have a stable line of product. But ideally, I, I like the co-op because they have those connections with the smaller farmers around. Again, don't like the prices because it seems price level and the quality of the paper. I don't know what that looks like to you guys to be able to source more products that are locally manufactured, even if it's just a, a different brand of tortilla chips. We've had that conversation. Yeah. Uh, it's not just a shape box. When we came in the neighborhood, we had a list of local uh, entrepreneurs, uh, Burgess Hot Links, and other things. Um, so we're interested in that. What, what really becomes a challenge for us is logistics and consistent distribution. If I have a local guy that has a field, for example, our, we buy corn all local from Slough House. That corn is not going to be ready until July 8th. <laughs> That's killing me. We need it here. Uh, so, we'll, you, you know, it, it really for us, our company, again, it's, it's owned by the employees. The company is about 800 million in retail sales. Uh, they do a tremendous amount of produce up and down the state. It becomes logistics, and it's hard. We pride ourselves in being, a, he's an op entrepreneur. He can do what he wants in his store, and we empower all of our key people to do that. It's just hard to buy local aromas from somebody and get them consistent uh, and not be out on the shelf. That's our challenge to be candid with you. But, but we're open. Look, we are open. The one thing about this company that I love and I still admire, I was there, he was there, when we had three stores, and now there's 24. And we empower, we'll, 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 we'll do, we can, we're not a big company like a Safeway, we can move on a dime. If we have local, Romas we can buy and we can bring them in, we can do it. We can do it at store level. We really allow that latitude if, if there's a flow, a consistent flow. Tony, we do have to we do have to move on. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. No, no, no. You guys are good. You guys are good. But really do want to thank our friends for Andrew Samuel. For first off, okay, okay, if you can make it real short, you can have the last word. Okay. You got your I mean your cuckoo. I'm a diabetic. Okay. So, you know, I can't do the salt. It's messed up. So, how with the food? I never tried it. I didn't even talk about it. Just, just the other day, yeah. Wednesday, bought some tomatoes, okay. uh, you know, and stuff. I do shop the store, but not the cooked food. So, is it, you know, is so, that salt? So, it's scratch. It's, it's, it's prepared. The recipes are from our cooks and our people who actually use the own restaurant. Uh, and so it may have some salt in it. There's probably a lot of salt in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to buy it in. Your blood pressure shoots up and you might be some salt. Yeah. 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 Like a thousand burgers and hot dogs to us for our Celebrate Oak Park event. So, so do, do check them out. They're doing work um, and they're donating to our event. So, so now we get to transition to community announcements. So we have a whole bunch of community announcements um, that are all really exciting. And I think the first one I'm going to take the privilege of. Uh, Starting with is, is Celebrate Oak Park. Thank you. Um, Celebrate Oak Park, which is our big uh, annual bash here at the Oak Park Neighborhood Association. It's happening on June 10th. Actually, we have handouts. We're expecting actually several thousand people. Uh, we're going to have electric vehicle ride and drives. We're going to have free food because they're donating it. Uh, we're going to have uh, ice cream as well for people who test drive an electric vehicle. Uh, we're going to have uh, bounce or no soccer street soccer fields. What else are we gonna have? We're gonna have street soccer. We're gonna have oh. easies. We're gonna have steam activities. Steam activities for the kids. Let's make the kids out for steam activities. We'll have uh, DJ. DJ performances. I think we'll get us fun. Get rid of some ice cream. Ice cream. Hawaiian shaved okay. ice. That was y'all last year. That was last year. Yeah. I was there. You were there. I remember you were there. I think I was there. Yes. Okay. okay. They've been Okina has been doing this for like years and years. So, so please come, 
Saturday, Y'all don't miss a tree because I was shut up there last year. Yeah. 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 And do you want to give that announcement? Do you want to give that announcement? That'd be great. Oh, farmer's market is starting next Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Farmer's market is back. Yeah. Yeah, they're still doing 9 to 1, okay. 9 to 1, we're doing 10 to 2. Okay, well, I'll get all of it. Yeah, just go at 9, okay. stay till 2. And then also at our park, the okay. community center, I mean, uh, farmer's market, they do uh, food stamp ups, the biggest ones, because every other place is a $10 limit. Are they? $20 limit. Yeah. Or, and really a little bit more. $20, you know, you give them your card, they take $20 off, and you get both days. Woo woo. Yeah. You know, that's right. Oh, and I may get free. Community that doesn't have a library is missing a heartbeat. 
because it's so central to the community, to the children in the neighborhood. I think we've got four elementary schools in this area. And um, we've got seniors. I heard the nice lady make a presentation of all the senior citizens. So it would be a community uh, asset. So I have here Friends of Oak Park <coughs> Library. You can use your phone and take the petition online. So uh, I have these to pass out. Also, if you don't want to use the phone, I have handwritten petition. It's real short. I'd love for you to One of these participate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you very much. I also want to introduce my daughter. Uh, her name is Michelle Chris, and she works with me very closely. And I, because I'm a mom, I can brag. She was just promoted to a, a principal at Berkeley. Um, this is my third week. 
And um, this is the first time I've gotten to talk to larger groups. So if anyone has ideas of groups I could talk to, um, you know, Adrian was the first one I called. I met with a pastor, Mark Meeks, yesterday, and got a bunch of names and stuff from him. So this is my first stop. I'm going to leave a bunch of flyers in my car, and I'm also going to the, um, to the Saturday Celebrate Oak Park. And something the next weekend, I think, in William Lamb Park. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, this, there's, I mean, if anyone has ideas, call me, email me, I can come talk to you. Um, it's really, just, it's a one time thing. It's money that you don't have to pay back. And I've never seen anything like it. And so far, everything's been easy. And it's money, it's free, it's here. So, step up it. Sacramento. Step up yes. Sacramento. It's related to the, to the Trump Grant. That's related to the Aggie Square. Related to the Aggie Square expansion, I don't even know. Yeah, it's up. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Aggie, we have Aggie Square with us. So we oh, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so as part good. of the Community Benefits Partnership Agreement um, with UC Davis, the City of Sacramento, and Wexford, the Aggie Square. Um, one of the agreements was for anti-displacement and affordable housing programs. So this is the implementation of part of those funds. So the city and the university together are implementing $10 million worth of anti-displacement, anti-homelessness programs. And the first set of grants to nonprofit entities, there were four that were awarded, each about $500,000, and Step Up was one of those. Um, back, I think the announcement came in early February, and so they're really quick to get involved and getting the money out the door. So this is all part of those first set of grants, and the city will evaluate the success of the initial set of programs, and they'll make additional funds of that total of $10 million available once they establish like how well it's going and is this meeting community needs. So, yeah. And you have flyers and I have flyers and my business card. The number on the bottom is my cell phone. Wow. Right. I know. So I, after this, I hope the phone rings off the hook. And I hope that's you call <laughs> Um, I'm sure there are other announcements. One thing I want to share, so uh, OPNA, we partner with SMUD. Uh, we have a, a good relationship with SMUD. Uh, and today was actually the start of their reduce, uh, basically in the summer months, I think through September, the end of September. They do a reduce five to eight thing, basically where your bill goes up if you're using power between five to eight. So if you left the AC on, you just got, you, you have a large bill starting today. Um, so just to know, SMUD, again, reduce your power use 5 to 8. There's actually a cheaper rate on the non-hours. Uh, you can do your laundry, etc. cetera, um, you know, at other times. But again, reduce 5 to 8, you'll save, you're, you'll save a lot of money this summer if you don't run the electric dryer between 5 to 8. Is that seven days a week? Uh, time seven days a week. Right right week. Five days a week. No, we get to buy. We get to have a rate. We get to have a cheaper rate. So do your laundry after the weekend. Yeah. Is there something to add? Yeah. Because um, you guys are talking about electric vehicles and the you know, really bad website. Um, we purchased the used electric vehicle. We didn't know for the first two years. And you know, told the smart that you had an electric vehicle. Maybe we could get a discount on the electric vehicle. Right. Oh, uh, the full electric use, of, not just for the use of the electric vehicle. Wow. So that was one of the big benefits that I saw. That's cool. All right. And, and Janice, you guys have a program uh, where folks are interested in purchasing an electric vehicle and they income qualify, they get a big rebate on that electric vehicle purchase, correct? Yes. In addition to all the other federal rebates. Yes. Um, and I can get uh, folks a name and permission um, just come talk to me and get connected with the right person. I'm an air monitoring person, so uh, it's a different program, but I'll connect you to the right folks. Yeah. Ninety-five hundred bucks off uh, a newer, a new maybe a used as well. Okay, that's a good deal for an EV if your income qualifies. Any other announcements? Because we have a special announcement at the very end. Anything else? Any other events coming up? So, oh, first Friday is this Friday. First Friday is tomorrow. Go to that. Um, Silverio Park is the 10th, go to that Juneteenth, and St. Louis Juneteenth is the 17th. Yeah. And um, this, your council member will be having Pilates in the park on this 
Sunday. All right, yeah. All right. We got free mats. Come out, Pilates in the park. I'm going to even be out there getting my, you know. <laughs> Sunday. Sunday from 9 to 11. Let me show you what. Show us. Let me show you what. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to take the magic part. I'm sorry, the magic part, 9 to 11, with your council member, uh, Pilates in the park. You know